Hopkins from Your Black World and the Black Business School. And um, I wanted to come in here and uh, say hello uh, in between all the craziness that's happening in the stock market. Um, I thought that it would be um, really interesting to uh, have a conversation about something that, um, that I just saw online that I thought you guys might get the kick out of. Uh, it has to do with Oprah and Gail. And uh, you, you guys have seen where Oprah and Gail um, haven't exactly been black America's uh, most favorite people. Uh, lately, and uh, and it really showed. Uh, I I wasn't really sure what the response was to Oprah and Gail uh, for, you know, for for what they did, you know, with the Kobe Bryant situation and all that stuff. And uh, this really kind of said a lot. This really actually told me a lot about how the public views Oprah and Gail. And so uh, anyway, let me. I'm gonna pull this up. And uh, do me a favor, type B1 in the chat if you believe black people come first, if you believe the black community is more important than any other community for you. And if you uh, want black people to win, type B1 in the chat. B1, that's our code, B in the number one. Uh, that means black first. Uh, we're black first before anything else. And uh, and, I, and that's what we represent on this platform. So uh, let me go ahead and just uh, uh, read some of this to you. So Oprah and Gail, Oprah and Gail are doing a contest right now in partnership with a magazine called Omaze or something. I don't know if that's one of Oprah's magazines or what, but uh, they're doing this contest. And uh, they, they said they're celebrating their 20th anniversary. And I don't know anniversary of what, that I don't know. Um, and, and they were saying basically like the winners of the contest could come to New York and meet Oprah and Gail and hang out with Oprah and Gail and be buddies with Oprah and Gail. Now, I'm going to ask you guys a question before I read some of the public responses. Uh, yes or no? Yes or no? If you had a chance to go to New York and hang out with Oprah and Gail, uh, would you would you take that offer? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes or no? You can go hang out with Oprah and Gail, be their buddies, go, you know, to the hairdresser together, maybe get your makeup done, your hair and nails done. How many of you, if you have the chance to go hang out with Oprah and Gail, would, would do that. Okay, I see a yes in here. I see Miss Bain says, Mashawn Bain says yes, but I see a lot of hell no's, and Elizabeth Coleman says yes, but I see uh, Didita says no, Beverly no, uh, M me rend on, uh, on my Instagram, Instagram Real Voice Watkins, he says hell no, okay, so I see, a, and I see a fuck no from Ru Ruboy, okay, all right, all right, so I see a lot of hell no's and fuck no's and, and what what the hell and no way and I'm not hanging out with agents okay okay so I see a lot of no's I see a few yeses though I see a few yeses okay well let me uh, read some of the comments Alicia brought this down to me and she she said boys you got to take a look at this and see what people are saying uh, you know in, in the comments on this contest so the it's so okay so the contest is sponsored by the Oprah magazine but I, I could have swore I saw Old Maze. So maybe Old Maze is short for Oprah Magazine. I don't know. Uh, hit the thumbs up button, by the way. Hit the thumbs up button if you haven't done it. Please hit the thumbs up button. All right. So uh, I'm looking here at the comments on Oprah's and Gail's little contest where you can go hang out with Oprah and Gail in New York uh, for the weekend. And I see Michelle says next. Uh, Margie says waiting. I don't know what that means. Lacey, I will take a pass. Cynthia, no thanks. Melody, no thanks. Paul Buckmill, no thanks. Uh, let me see. Erica says, no thank you. Prioritize your specials and make them more balanced. Then maybe someone will want to see you. But honestly, I think the damage is already done. Felicia says, no thanks. Not too happy with either one of them right now. They have some apologizing to do. Uh, Maya says, oh, you've been married for 20 years? Congrats. Right? So that's kind of funny because, you know, a lot of people have always wondered how they are, why they are so close. Like, like, like thick as thieves. Like, Ain't no man ever, like, sliding in between Oprah and Gail. Stedman almost comes off like a prop sometimes, I think, for a lot of people. I'm not speculating on anybody's personal behavior. I don't really care if you're gay, straight, or whatever. But I think a lot of people, I, some people kind of feel like the cat might be out of the bag. But I'm not going to speculate on that one way or the other because I really don't care. Uh, let me see here. Diane says, OMG, this will be one of my dreams come true if I'm selected. Okay, so Diane uh, is one of the people that actually says she would love to do it. But then there's people that are coming right behind Diane and saying, why? It doesn't make any sense. You know, stuff like that. Let me see. Dolly says, no thanks. I don't need charity visits. I don't know what that means exactly, but I think I know what it means. Uh, let's see here. Pamela, no thanks. I hope she reads all her comments like she signs her checks. Never sell out. That's how slavery became possible. Uh, Sydney says, I'd love to meet them, girlfriends. And for those who think they are unbalanced, I suggest that we start supporting their media and it will begin to be influenced by us. And Gail, is it my eyes or are you back at the camera? 
What a tart. Okay, I don't know what that means exactly. I don't. Okay. All right. So anyway, uh, let's see here. Um, let's see. Kim says no thanks. Dion says this is just a fake advertisement to test or feel out the public. Uh, Charmin says no thank you. Wendy, no thank you. Antonio, something just ain't right about this whole picture, literal and otherwise. Uh, Lindsay says the sunken place? Question uh, mark. Let's see here. Uh, I don't want to meet them. They look crazy. Says Cynthia. Re Renee says something not right about this. Uh, Elena says okra and kale. No thanks. Uh, Jalo, meet them for what? Eileen couldn't care less. Wilma, no way. Trevor says I'd rather pick cotton. I'd rather pick cotton. So those are that, those are some of the comments, and 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 there's more. I mean, I'm just going down the list, and and what was interesting to me was that you know I didn't really know. I thought that I, maybe I was in the minority. I mean, I've, I've always had an issue with Oprah and Gail, and I, I talked to Monique the other day again on, on the phone, and and uh, and and we were we were talking a little bit about some of the stuff because you know she came on the channel on drboystv.com. I think she'll be back at some point, and um, and and I'm gonna tell you, it's 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 real interesting to see how the public is starting to see what she's been talking about for years, and uh, and I don't think Oprah and Gail have a lot of love, you know, from the black community right now. I, I think and it's fascinating because. You know, just four or five years ago, people were talking about Oprah running for president, maybe even two or three years ago. And now I, I think people have really come after her. And and I think that it's um also interesting in that it may signal kind of a, a shift in the regime in terms of how we view uh, so-called elite black people. Um, the, You know, the, 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 the old guard, the, you know, the baby boomers and beyond uh, of, of so-called black elite, I think I, I really get a sense that they're losing a lot of their influence and power. Um, I think that people uh, are starting to demand a little more authenticity. Um, you know, so for example, you saw this week, uh, uh, who's it, uh, Kamala Harris and Michael Eric Dyson came out and endorsed Joe Biden. And, uh, and I can just tell you, you know, from what I see, from where I'm sitting, my belief is that both of them gave their endorsements in that way at that time because they're both they both stand to benefit from a biden presidency just mark my words if biden is elected president kamala will probably have some sort of official appointment uh maybe even vice president and dyson is going to be going to the white house a lot he's going to be visiting the white house a lot because in fact if you recall back when obama got elected and i actually like michael eric dyson so i'm not even dissing him at all but when obama got elected uh dyson had about a two-week period where he was talking crazy shit about Obama. Does anybody remember that? I mean, Dyson was going hard at Obama, and he called him Pharaoh, and 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 I mean, he was going harder than even Obama's critics. Even the people that were questioning Obama were like, "Whoa, whoa, slow down, slow down." And then something changed, something flipped, and suddenly he was Obama's biggest cheerleader. And I think Michael has to kind of account for that. I think that you can't just flip the script on people and have people not say. Wait a minute. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. A week ago, you were saying this, this, and this, and now you're saying this, this, and that. And I think people are seeing through that, you know. And so I think with Oprah, it's the same thing. This is the same, you know. This is kind of the same crowd, unfortunately. This is, you know, Dyson and 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 Kamala and Oprah and and you know, and the the, the what they call what Dr. Claude Anderson refers to as the leading blacks. They kind of have this um, space that they operate in where. Uh, everybody gets hooked up. Everybody gets to go to the fancy parties. You know, they get to meet all the most relevant white people. And uh, and unfortunately, uh, what happens is there's the impression that they're leaving behind the masses of black people, that the masses of black people don't matter, that the masses of black people are supposed to sit back and just worship the leading blacks. Al Sharpton is another one of them. He's another guy that's kind of in that clique. Uh, maybe an Angela Rye is in that clique. You know, I, I imagine Angela Rye's Biden endorsement will be coming at some point because I'm sure they're going to work with her to get her to get their, to give them their, her support or to get to get. Sorry, you know you know what I mean. You know what I'm trying to say. And so so really, I think that maybe for those who are in that leading blacks category, I think they have to acknowledge that the people actually have a little bit more of a voice than they had in the past. Um, I remember I, I read the comments like I like to pay attention to what people are saying and when I saw um, uh, Kamala Harris's endorsement of Biden again people pointed out the hypocrisy I saw people saying well wait a minute wait wait a, a, a few months ago you were trying to convince us that this guy's a racist and now you're saying that he's our savior like wait hold what the what the wait what 
what? You know, that's confusing to people. It, it was as confusing as when Dyson went from, I can't stand Obama, to I love Obama. People are like, what? And what's going on in a lot of these cases, unfortunately, is you have um, these broker deals kind of happening where uh, people say, basically, they go to white folks and they say, look, I influence black people. I'm a leading black. I'm a leading Negro. And black people listen to me. And if you take care of me, then I can make your life easy. I will go to the, these black folks and tell them, vote for this guy. But if you don't take care of me, then I can make your life miserable. Um, you know, and so a lot of people have accused the Sharptons of doing that kind of thing, where you know he'll either be your best buddy or your worst enemy, depending on how much money you put in the collection plate or whatever it is, whatever hookup you give. So for you know, so so I'm not I'm not here to really critique or criticize anybody or attack anybody. Because uh, that's, I think that's beyond, we, we, we're kind of beyond that. But I do think it's important to kind of understand what it is. And I think that, you know, when you're talking about the people, you know, I see a lot of uh, purity in terms of people just saying, look, I just want what's best, best for the community. I want the black community to win. And I don't think you have that same purity of purpose amongst the quote unquote leading blacks. You know, the leading blacks, it's all about making a deal. It's all about getting money in their pocket. It's all about getting, you know, speaking engagements and book deals and the chance to take, you know, selfies with celebrities. And that's not really what the community needs unless it's done in a way where the community is getting what they want. Like, I don't have a problem with book deals and speaking engagements and selfies with celebrities, but you got to represent the people. You got to connect to the people. If you can't connect to the people, if the people are looking at you like, what the fuck is this shit? Like, then you're going to lose because the people aren't stupid. Like, people can connect the dots. Like, they'll, you know, they'll, they'll, again, they'll look at a Kamala Harris and say, wait a minute, you told us, you told us six months ago that Biden was a racist. Now you're telling us that he's our savior. Like, what the hell? It, it, well, you know, with, with that, that unfortunately makes, that leads us to conclude, oh, oh, I know why, because Biden promised you that he would make you, maybe make you his vice president if he gets elected. So now, suddenly, you're using your so-called influence over us. You're using our vote. You know, to to leverage benefits for you and your family, and uh, and I don't think so. So at the end of the day, I, I tend to um, really resonate with people like Dr. Claude Anderson. I'm a big advocate of his. I, I really do. I I, I'm, I make no. Uh, I I don't in any way stutter when I tell you that I think Dr. Claude Anderson is an important leader in our community because when I talk to Dr. Anderson in private, when nobody else is watching, all he's talking about is black people. All he talks about is black folk. He said, I did. I, he, he said, I mean, he's, he's at home. He's not feeling well. He said, it, it, the whole conversation, yeah, black folk, we got to get it together. I mean, black folk, they got to stop giving their vote away. Black folk, they got to stop giving their money away. Black folk, they got, that's all, I mean, that, that's what he'll talk about. And he'll do that for six straight hours. Him and Farrakhan, those are two of the strongest older men I've ever met in my life. I've never seen 80 something year old men who can sit and talk about you and your community for hours at a time. And I think those are the kinds of leaders that we have to support. Um, not so much, not to say that these other people don't care about the community, but I think they care in a way where it's not so much about finding the real solutions. It's more so about sort of uh, getting certain individuals established within the pre-existing power structure. And, uh, and I'm not a fan of any of that. I think that if you can't come with a solution that actually makes sense, that represents a substantive change of what we've seen before, then I think a lot of people are just not going to listen to you because I think a lot of people are just sick of the nonsense. So I think that with Oprah and Gail, going back to this little contest that they did and the way people are clowning them online, if I'm advising them, I would advise them to really shift their whole branding strategy. You know, I, I just really think from a business standpoint, what they're doing now probably worked really well in the 1980s and maybe the 1990s, but it does not work in 2020. It only makes you look silly. So anyway, that's it. That's my two cents. That's what I'm seeing from, from where I stand. Uh, do me a favor. Please hit the thumbs up button. Please hit the share button. Hit the subscribe button. Uh, you're watching DrBoyceTV.com, the home for intelligent black people. Follow me on Instagram if you are on Instagram. All right? My Instagram is the Real Boyce Watkins. Uh, also, the Black Financial Channel is on Instagram. So go to the Black Financial Channel on Instagram and follow because we're talking about this stock market crash and what's going on and the dynamics of that. And also, of course, if you're always welcome to go check out the Black Business School. I promote it all the time because I want everybody to at least do something for free with the Black Business School so that you can learn. We, we, we will teach you more for free than that expensive white university taught you for $100,000. I guarantee that. Uh, you just go ask anybody who's part of the school now. Uh, last but not least, I'll be in Atlanta this week. Andre C. 
Hatchet and I on the 13th are doing uh, a, a Black Wealth Talk. It's a private event uh, in Atlanta. So if you'd like to go, just go to drboyceatlanta.com. That's drboyceatlanta.com. Next will be Hanover, Maryland uh, in, in March. Uh, springintowealth.com is the URL. That's springintowealth.com. And then there's some other stuff in San Jose and the Essence Fest and, uh, and of course, a few other things. I can't remember everything right now, but I'll keep you guys posted. And I'm going to continuously mention that so you guys can mark it on your calendar if you want to come out. So I'm out. Have a good day. Thanks for listening. I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Peace.